How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video. I'm not really smiling. Behind that smile is tears because as of right now, <laughs> the Supra is my only car. Besides the motorcycle, but that's not a car. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, then you probably don't know this, but uh, the, the Mustang kind of uh, took a shit on me. It, uh, let's just say it has a quick disconnect crank now. So uh, I'll explain what happened I'll, and I'll explain my plans with that car and everything that, uh, you know, pretty much Mustang related with that today. Um, I'm not really gonna do anything to the Supra. The Supra itself is fine. Wheels and everything looking good. So the Supra is chilling. Today is more focused on the Mustang. So we'll hop in the Supra, drive to my house. Focus camera. We'll hop in the Supra, drive to my house, and I will show you guys what happened. And uh, like I said, I'll talk about my plans with the Mustang and everything like that. So uh, let me really quick just uh, talk about what happened. So the other day I was out cruising with my buddy and he hadn't been in it in a while. He just got his ZL1 back and I was cruising with him. I was showing him pretty much what it could do. And so I did a couple pulls. I did exactly one and a half pulls. Second one, well, it didn't end well. So the first one felt somewhat fine. I noticed this one thing that I had been doing where it almost feels like at a high RPM, the car is like going back and forth like that. It didn't feel like it was breaking up or anything like that. I felt that before when my spark plugs weren't gapped correctly. It didn't feel like that. It felt like just, it just felt like it was like kind of vibrating a little bit. And so I didn't think much of it. I had a couple other people drive the car and test it and they didn't think much of it. Well, on the second, on the second pull, I was feeling it pretty strong and then my engine just kind of uh, exploded. So what ended up happening was the torque and the leverage from the Pro Charger pulley just pretty much snapped my crank. My, my crank is sticking out of my motor. So got that quick disconnect crank, you know, no one's gonna be stealing my car anytime soon. So I'll show you guys that and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just go head over to my place and I'll talk about what I plan on doing with it uh, on the way there. So you guys will see. But I do just wanna say, I am, again, I am happy with the Supra. The Supra goes in on Monday, so I will have no car for maybe a week, a week and a half. Supra goes in, GTE swap, flex fuel, single turbo. Oh, I can't wait. All right, guys, we are in the Supra, obviously heading to my place right now. And so while we're cruising, enjoying, taking in the scenery of the beautiful Southern California freeways, I figured might as well talk about my plans with the Mustang. So let me just start a little bit back though. So about a couple weeks ago, I decided it might be a smart move to sell the Pro Charger kit off of the Mustang and go back to a twin screw style supercharger, like a VMP, a, a Whipple, a Kenny Bell, something like that, just a top mount supercharger. They're uh, a lot more torquey. Some of them, I could probably get a little bit more power out of them than I could with the Pro Charger kit. I'm pretty much maxed out on the Pro Charger kit. We're at almost 800 wheels, so I'm not really complaining, but I think since my car doesn't have a crazy red line anyways, it's only to like 6,000. I think I have it maxed out at 6,500 right now. Since that's pretty much where my red line's at, I kind of need that instant torque to get off the line faster if I'm doing any sort of roll racing compared to a supercharger or a centrifugal to where it's more like a turbo setup where you have to build up boost somewhat. I thought a twin screw style would be the best option for me, but obviously I did a quick disconnect crankshaft. I did, you know, <laughs> I did my, my wireless crankshaft uh, install. So now we got that Bluetooth crankshaft. I gotta go ahead and sync it up with the car that way I can drive it out. But anyways, since I kind of destroyed the motor and I don't know exactly what I might have broken, you know, since the crankshaft snapped, I might have broken, I might have hit a valve. I might have snapped my, my chain in there. So there's a few things that I could have damaged as well. So. I'm not really too thrilled about that, but so what we gotta do, okay, is keep the three valve. I'm not getting rid of the three valve. It's not gonna go to a Coyote car. It's not gonna become an LS swap, nothing like that. As cool as that would be, it just doesn't really make sense for me. I asked a couple people, hey man, Coyote swap, does that make sense for this car? And they were like, no. They're like, Coyote swaps, it's easy to get in there, but it's a bitch to wire and make like work correctly and stuff like that. So I'm just, I'm just not gonna do that. I'm not gonna even mess with it. And then on top of that, if I buy a Coyote, I gotta build a Coyote and then I gotta buy a supercharger kit. So why go through all that when I could just build the three valve and throw a different supercharger kit or whatever the hell on there. So we're gonna keep the three valve, okay? Long story short, we're keeping the three valve. Three valve ain't going nowhere. But what are we gonna do with the motor? So I'm debating on doing some of the work myself. I know I don't really work on the three valve too much because engine work is just serious work and I didn't go to school for any of that and I know you know a lot of you guys think that you guys are all mechanics and you can do whatever you want in your driveway that's cool and all but it's different if you're trying to make a thousand horsepower that's a lot different to do you know thousand horsepower yourself 
if you have a background in you know mechanics and sure go ahead but I don't I, I I went to school for a little bit for business and automotive but I didn't graduate or anything like that I never tore down a motor so it would be all new to me I'm sure me and a couple of my buddies who have actually done work on cars I'm sure we can get it done but I just don't think it makes sense if I'm trying to push such a large amount of horsepower I don't think it makes sense for me to do that so I'm probably gonna take the car in and we're gonna tear down the motor and we're gonna see all the damage that I did Okay, we're gonna see if I broke just the crankshaft, if I snapped my chains to the valves. Anyways, we're gonna tear down the whole car and I figure while the, the motor is out, I might as well go crazy. It's gonna take some time and it's gonna take a lot of money, but I might as well build the ultimate three valve. I'm talking ported heads, crazy custom cam, ridiculous compression ratio, just the absolute most mean three valve out there. And so that's kind of my plan with this car. I know that I can probably get a thousand wheel out of the car, which is a lot. That's a lot of horsepower. A thousand wheel horsepower out of a three valve. It's a lot of horsepower. These three valves, you know, you make seven or eight hundred, and that's respectable for a three valve. That's like, okay, it's a three valve. Coyote, you need at least a thousand to even contend because coyotes are just such better platforms to build that it almost makes more sense, like I said, to swap to one, but it's just a pain in the ass. We already have a solid three valve. You know, for all we know, like I said, it might just be a crank and then we can, you know, just do a couple more little things and we'll have some fun. But anyways, so we're going to go crazy on the motor. Like I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cheap out on anything. We're going to port the head, crazy cam, probably some crazy ass valves too. Just absolutely ridiculous inside the motor. But now you're probably thinking, Drew, what are you going to go with, with a forced induction? Are you going to go supercharger? Are you going to go turbo? Are you going to go pro charger again? What are you going to do? I'm thinking... Since I'm gonna be in there, might as well max out the red line to what the factory computer can do, which is 7,500. So we'll get another 1,000 RPM out of the computer and we'll toss a couple of spoolie snails at that bitch. We'll have two spoolie snails underneath the hood. I talked to my tuner about it. He thinks this is the best way for me to get 1,000 horsepower out of the car. So we'll have a couple spoolie snails uh, uh, right underneath the hood or you know rear mounted. We'll figure out which way we're gonna do it, but we're gonna have one mean fucking machine. So like I said, I'm not gonna skip any expenses with the car. My plan at the end of the day is to have a crazy built three valve motor that can rev out to 7,500 any day of the week. And we'll have consistent, consistent is the key word, 950 to 1,000 horsepower. You can dyno at 1,000 horsepower, 1,100 horsepower, 1,200 horsepower. But if you're doing highway rolls and you're three, four rolls deep and your car gets heat soaked, you don't have that 1,000 horsepower no more. You might have, you know, 850, 900. And so I want that consistent 950 to a thousand so we'll have to see like i said it's going to be a lengthy process wow this light is really taking forever it's going to be a lengthy process but i i know i can get it done and it's just going to take money and time but like i said super goes in on monday so we will have the gte swap with the big turbo or decent sized turbo i should say flex fuel so this will be fun in the meantime we'll have some fun with this car make some content on it and then we will send the mustang off and get it completely built i know a few of you guys are going to be like drew why don't you do it yourself you know like i said i already covered this a little bit I just don't have that kind of mechanical background to do it. I just don't. I, I I know my limits, okay? I know my limits. I'm sure I could tear down the motor, but I don't know if I could put it back together. So I'm like, I'm just not gonna, not even really gonna try with it. And, and at the same time, if they're gonna go and build it and tune it and throw it in the car anyways, you know, I could pull the motor myself. It's not that hard, but what am I gonna do with it? Pulled in my driveway. I, I can't assemble it and do all that shit. I don't have the tools for that. You know, I got, I got one ratchet set to myself and it's not even at my house, it's not my parents. So let me go ahead and let me get to my house and let me show you guys what happened with the Mustang. And uh, let me know, let me know down in the comments if you guys are excited and what you would do if you were in my position. I know a few of you are gonna say, just sell the fucking car, just sell it. You don't need it no more, you got the Supra. Now, I think it's gonna be a crazy highway killer and this will be a crazy canyon killer. So uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's, it's gonna be a lot of fun and I'll have one of each highway rolls canyon car. It's gonna be absolutely insane. So I'm not gonna skip any expenses like I've said before and I just can't wait to get it back because it's gonna come back and it's gonna be a completely different beast. Wow, my brakes in this thing are absolute dog shit. <gasps> Look at my boy. Look at my boy. Look how they did my boy.
<laughs> Why they gotta do them like this? All right, let me go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys. Yeah, this is how it's gonna be probably for the next few months. Uh, luckily, I washed her right before she went into hibernation, so she is still really clean. But let me go ahead and pop the hood. All right, guys. Well, yeah, see, at first glance, everything is fine. I mean, yeah, we're missing a belt there, but that's fine. It's in the engine bay somewhere. Yeah, see, it's right there. Just kind of, just kind of shot off a little bit, but it's fine. Um, Pro Charger kit, everything there is solid. <laughs> it gets a little bit funky though when we look down here. Hopefully I can get it to focus. Let me let me adjust this really quick. So if you look, you see my Pro Charger pulley drive right there attached to my ATI balancer. And if you look, yeah, right at the rear of that balancer. Come on, let's focus on you. Oh, <laughs> see that hole? Yeah, that's uh, that's where my front main seal is supposed to be. And you see that thing sticking out? Yeah. That's my crank. I know, right? So let me show you guys just how weak this thing really is. Okay, so I started recording right as they started doing lawn work, but if you look, <laughs> I got that quick disconnect crank. So I could actually spin this completely around. And and if this if this fan motor was in here, I could probably yank it out. But uh, yeah, so like I said, the Pro Charger kit and everything here is fine. It's It's just the crank. So we're gonna have to yank the motor out and go from there. So yeah, the car will stay down for a bit. We will, in the meantime, focus on the Supra, and that will be that. In a couple weeks, a couple months, we'll see when the when the Mustang will finally get started, take it in and drop it off and see what they can do and assess the damage, but before everyone and their mama starts doing their lawn, I'm gonna go ahead and go inside and edit this video because apparently everyone is out here mowing their lawn today. So let me go inside, edit this video. On Monday, we will take in the Supra, so I hope you guys are excited for that, but uh, yeah, I mean, RIP Mustang. Let's get an F in the chat for that crank. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.